Strange Y'all Ride is a show about people, places, and things in the great Northwest. People doing things a little left of center, making things uniquely their own. And you're going to find in this little journey that some of those things come from deep down inside of us. I'm Regan Lane. And I'm Raymond Hayden. And this is Strangely All Right. Hi, everybody. I'm Regan Lane. And I'm Raymond Hayden. And welcome to Strangely All Right. Welcome to Strangely All Right TV. We're so glad to be here again with you folks. Our guest today is local to the Pacific Northwest, born and raised in T-Town, and he's also an inspiration to many of us that know him. Absolutely. His broadcasting career got started at a very young age in television and then soon moved to radio, where he was a DJ on KTAC. And today he donates his time at St. Leo's Church, helping people in need, and he's also a host for the Jazz Vortex on NWCZ Radio. Kevin McBride McKim, his story is filled with tragedy and triumph and through it all, an unbreakable faith. Today he's going to share his crazy journey with all of us and how he was able to hit all the curveballs that were thrown his way. Yeah, great guy. We're really looking forward to talking to him. We're at NWCZ right now. Ready, ready to go in and talk to him? Let's do this thing. All right, let's do it. Little Kevin started out on TV helping to advertise products on some local kids programs and as luck would have it at this early age his next door neighbor was the number one DJ on the radio side of this broadcasting company. He also had many friends who were young musicians and were forming garage and basement bands. Much of that had to do with growing up around the great bands that were spawning in Tacoma at the time. With all this musical influence and the time spent at the local AM station no one was surprised when Kevin was finding himself attached to a couple of local AM and FM stations. Then a door opened up for an on-air spot as an FM jock in the Seattle-Tacoma market, and the rest pretty much is history. The ensuing years brought personal challenges and a test of Kevin's faith. Within the first five minutes of meeting Daryl Fortune, the owner of NWCZ Radio, he knew that he wanted to build a high-quality jazz show there. Daryl and he agreed that radio should be fun, and if it wasn't fun, why should we do it? As Kevin often says, NWCZ Radio, free radio for free people. Sounds like from our conversations back in the mid-70s, uh, at the radio station, the FM station. Yeah. What was that again? It was KLAY 106 FM. KLAY. Yeah. Tell, tell us how you got the gig and kind of what was going on in the mid-70s with some of the bands and people that you were running into. Uh, the, gig, the gig came about through uh, my good lifelong buddy, Steve Michaels, who was already there working on the air. I think Steve Slayton was still there. He may have just been leaving to go up to Seattle and... Uh, Steve said, there's an opportunity here for a board shift, and I was down there in five minutes. <laughs> and they said, sure, you know, and it's just, just I had the show. It was just that quick, and that was the uh, start of uh, the 70s into the early 80s. FM disc jockey. Come on, man! You got a bunch of stuff. At it. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't I, hold out. On I it. mean, we were we were the station was hooked up with the uh, um, the Buffalo Party, the Dinosaurs. I mean, those group, those you know, radical little um, commune things where they had the rock festivals and stuff. So the station was involved in that. Um, yeah, a lot of the local uh, local clubs like the Ad Lib in Kent and Baldy's. Baldy's was a big one up there with Phil up in uh, Milton. You know, mm -hmm. with the bands up there. A lot of the stuff was the local bands. You know, and you know from the scene, the days of Toulouse and sure. and on and on. And then so, uh, 106 FM. Though we we played the commercial stuff, we were a lot about the local artists. In fact. Just before I was arriving there, uh, there was a little unknown band that used to hang out at the uh, station uh, by the name of uh, Heart. It was, uh -huh. yes, it was Heart. <laughs> so, Kevin McBride McKim, here we are, NWCZ Radio Studios. Yes, we are. We're in the man cave of all radio stations. That's right. Big D and all his programs he's put together has really created um, some history, especially with where Terrestrial Radio was kind of going over to the internet radio. Things are really starting to happen here. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the future of getting your music, your talk shows, the whole thing. I, I can see it. And doing it the right way. Uh, with, with freedom. Sure. Yes. Well, because you know, a lot of times you, know, you take those restraints away. People can be themselves. and you know. So, you know, the people out there watching, it's great to hear the history, but can you think of one behind-the-scenes story 
that you know maybe has <laughs> never come out until now. Oh, exclusive to Strange Yellow Right Television. Wow. Yeah. It, yeah. I'd have you can't, to. Hey, there's a statute of limitations. I, so whatever it is, you can't be. I know. There. You know. I'd have to curb a couple of things there. I'm not, not <laughs> speak about those. The unmentionable. Those will come things. out in the book, right? You know, there was you know FM radio in the day. Right. right. Uh, we were a little house, uh, which wasn't in a business place, so therefore it, it conduced itself to. Uh, um, impromptu parties, for lack of better words. And um, Stan, don't get mad at me for telling saying this. No, but there would occasionally uh, a group called the Dinosaurs would show up and put a keg in the sink, and uh, and the party was on. Um, occasionally, we have visitors uh, show up at the station. Um, and you're not talking about the TPD, are you? No, I'm not talking about the TPD. This may be why the TPD was yeah, blinking their lights maybe. out there. I don't know. Um, so, it, you know, there was, uh, yeah, there was just little parties in the station that... Uh, mm -hmm. Little. Little. So we both love music. Duh. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah. yeah. Top five guitar players. Uh, top five guitar players. I would have to go with Seattle's own Jimi Hendrix. Uh, loved him. Uh, Mark Knopfler. Okay. Uh, Clapton. I like Clapton in, in, in many, many different ways. Uh, I'm just not going to say the predictable ones. I, I, some people don't like this guy. Maybe it's because his attitude. I like Joe Bonamassa. I just like, I like Joe and I like where he came from. And my number five, and I just were talking about this with you, is my friend, a local guitarist who mm -hmm. cut his teeth with uh, Robert Cray, and that would be none other than Mr. Joe Belenis. Right on, uh, right on. Just great stuff. Great list, man. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So uh, the Jazz Vortex, that's mm -hmm. your baby that came into here when you first started on NWCZ. Tell me about that. Yes, I uh, came here with my lifelong buddy, Jay Mabin. Okay. Uh, the best harp around here. Mm -hmm. And we approached uh, Daryl Fortune, the owner of the station, about putting a jazz show here. We were thinking of going to NPR with it. And five minutes into the conversation with uh, Daryl, I knew this is where we wanted to bring the baby. And, uh, you know, Daryl... Daryl got it. Daryl came out of Los Angeles radio, and he understood what the suits had done to terrestrial radio, mm -hmm. and he wanted no part of that, like I didn't. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have fun, and we wanted to have freedom, and he afforded me both those, and so the Jazz Vortex was born on June 8th of 2014. <laughs> Now, like I said, with the new turn of events here at NWCZ Radio, um, the freedoms again are afforded to me, and I'm looking at putting a rock show together for a Friday night slot from 8 until 10 p.m., and we're going to call it Rock Candy. Nice. And we're going to do like, just like an old underground FM station, and we're going to play the cuts that you wish you could hear, but you'll never hear them on Terrestrial Radio. We'll take care of you. So you grew up in T-Town in the 60s, right? Oh, well, yeah, that's when I became in my formative years. In yeah. your formative yeah, years? I, what was it like around here back then? Uh, Tacoma was, it was, a great, it was a great town. It was uh, meat and potatoes. It, was, uh, it had its seedy section down on Pacific Avenue. I really miss that. I have, I have great resentments against the uh, mall people for building the mall and taking the seed out of Tacoma. Because I used to hang out there a lot. <laughs> you were one of the CD people. Well, I I hung I you know I I moved within the CD people, mm. you know, because uh, there was pool halls downtown. I was attracted to uh, learn how to hustle pool from one of the world's great Whitey Michaels and uh, really yeah. I, so I spent an inordinate amount of time down there, and much to my mother's dismay and chagrin, but she burned a lot of candle wax at St. Leo's for me, probably more than any other mother, just to sure that I came out of the CD area so yeah so you know what's gonna happen when this show airs yeah. there's gonna be a bunch of guys sitting back eating cheeseburgers going I knew he was a shark <laughs> it's gonna come <laughs> well, out yeah you know uh, I you know I was good I was very good I was 
good enough that the uh, pros took me around and shot this old 16-year-old kid that could just shoot the eyes out of the ball. And I made money. Wow. Were yeah. there bands playing downtown? Band, the Gaslight of Go-Go. Remember the old Gaslight of Go-Go down at <laughs> night? Now, my buddies from, were uh, Marzano and Bertuzzi and Shannon and um, Byron Wade. They all played in the Hustlers down at the uh, old Gaslight of Go-Go, 9th and Pacific. So, yeah, there was bands. And then there was the... Uh, Ezzy's Addict, which was yeah. kind of the strip club where Granny and Go Go, that old lady, had no business on a pole, would slide up and down in the window. Somehow that was attractive. I never could figure that one out. That, that did go on in Tacoma. <laughs> we are definitely opening up Pandora's <laughs> box. We're, we're yeah. opening up strong right now, yes, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, well, you know, it always gets better. I was reading in your bio, so you live next door to a pretty well-known DJ. Well, in the in the day. In the day. In, in the day, in, yeah. Yeah, but you didn't mention who that DJ was. Well, his name was was Hal Hills. He was the voice of Tacoma. Okay. Literally, that's what he uh, and he was on KTNT AM, uh, which was about three hundred feet from my house. So, and he lived right next door. So, what a great marriage that was. Um, so did you did you sneak in and listen or did you? Did well, I started I started out on Channel Eleven KTNT on the Daddy Din Show, which was a kitty program, and I advertised uh, cereal on there. He would feed me this stuff that tastes like the cardboard box, and I had a space helmet on, and he would close the lid immediately because he knew I was going to spit it. And this was live television, so there was oh, yeah. you know the inside of that helmet was just covered with this cereal. And I can say that now because they're out of business. Sure, sure. And then I, you know, did those little kitty programs. And then I got on the uh, Bar S Saturday sports show with Pat Heath. And he made sandwiches. And for some reason, he wanted me to sit on the set with him and, and eat sandwiches. And I could talk sports as a young, as a little kid. I knew a lot about baseball, so we'd talk. And Harold, Hal Hills lived next door to me. And he was a disc jockey, so I was constantly going up to the studio and sitting in with him. And so at that early age, I was just taking this all in on how this radio worked. And I told him at about age seven or eight, this is what I want to do. I came out of the hippie era. I enjoyed some of the hippie uh, activities and things that went along with that. What would and, those be, Kevin? Well, there's, you know, I, I had a propensity to want to escape and uh, at times, and there was little things on the street you could get to help escape and, and take magical trips in your mind, and I, and I partake in that quite often. And, uh, and I'll be quite upfront, and I don't really... It's like everybody knows anyways. And I, alcohol I liked a lot, and I thought that that was a, a good thing to have around a lot of times. You're kind of talking about, you know, slowly how this is drugs and alcohol have taken over your life. Was there something, was there a catalyst that kind of, you know, made you kind of see the light, if you will? Because like you said, like you said, in your own words, things were becoming a train wreck. They're, obviously, they're not now, so no, there's something that no, happened no. And at to that change that. Yeah, well, yeah, at that time, I mean, there was certainly the, uh, and it's called, you, you hear this term sometimes, frothy emotional appeal from my relatives who love me dearly, and God bless them for doing that to, for me. Uh, they did an interference. I think today they're called, it's called an intervention. Mm -hmm. right. They sat me in this, my cousin's house, and each one of them ran around, and there was a whole bunch of people there, uh, and they all told me how it affected their lives in one shape or form or the other, and uh, I truthfully, honestly, didn't want to hear a word of it. And uh, so you continued on for a while after this interference, and then there was something that happened here at St. Leo's. Yeah, yeah, I, I continued on, and... Uh, I pretty much, as we have talked, many talk about, things kind of went away in my life, like a place to live and things like that were slowly slipping away from me. And um, I did start out at St. Leo's. I was baptized there. I went to school there. I, you know, and that was kind of my safe spot, but hadn't been for years. And I found myself in door number three in front of St. Leo's Church at 5 a.m. one morning, crouched in that doorway sleeping because I didn't know where else to go. And a hand came on my shoulder, and at 5 a.m. on the streets, that's a scary feeling. And I woke up to these loving eyes of a guy named Steve who worked at St. Leo's. 
and Steve knew me. And he took me inside the uh, kitchen directory, where I think we're shooting this right now. This is old full circle for me, and told me his story in great detail and told me there was a way out. Uh, so he started to open my eyes to the possibilities that I was worth something, that um, quit beating myself up, and man up, and walk out of hell. So you're in a position where you're affecting a lot of people's lives. You're giving back. Um, are you, do you have any regrets, or do you think that things happen? You know, it's, I know it's a cliche, but things happen for a reason that lead us to the places we are. I guess that old story about one kid sitting in the room with a room full of toys and he's not happy and he's breaking everything and the other kid's sitting in the room and it's full of horse poop and he's sitting there and he's smiling and you ask that kid in the, in the poop room, well, how come you're smiling? And he goes, well, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> you know, and I, and, and I, and I that think... That has got to make, that has got to make this episode. And I that's think great. that's, that's what is here there is there 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 is a pony mm -hmm. um and it and it doesn't have to be a house on rich bitch hill and it doesn't have to be a brand new car mm -hmm. but it can be getting your dignity back having a place to, of shelter and food in your belly and those are pretty basic needs that many many don't uh, get in the richest country in the world and it's sad sometimes mm -hmm. to see it it's but you know this is where I'm at, so uh, I can be maximum service to many people, and that does not make me think, Kevin. Some days I have, I'm frustrated. But, You're human. But I'm human. How many people do they feed here? Is it like these 500 Hun meals hundreds, a day? Hundreds a day are mm -hmm. fed here. Um, and, and the day now that with the Nativity House, that is uh, opened all day from basically 7 in the morning on. And it's a place where uh, they can gather, and they're not out on the street. And there's and there's a, available counseling over there. There's a, there's also it's, there's things over there and programs or or um, feelers to programs for these people. You know, try to help them. And so those things are available here for the people that are trying to make a difference in their life. Where does the um, I'm just curious. <clears throat> Where does the food come from? Is it is it St. Leo's or is it, you guys have a partnership with the local food banks? Or? Well, we have the St. Leo's Food Connection, which is one of the oldest uh, um, food banks in the city of Tacoma. And it's housed right over here in the old school building. And um, that that's part of it, um, where the food comes in to, to uh, feed the people here on a daily basis. The, the community as a whole is a is great outpouring of love. And I see it down here. I see a lot of families come down and volunteer here and bring stuff, and and they recognize the need. And uh, you know that's that's heart lifting to me. Uh, sometimes I hear people say, "Well, you know, it's people's own fault." Well, you know, maybe in some cases that's true, but in many cases it's not. It's the economy shifted, jobs went away, and they were left with nothing. And so I, I feel, it's my feeling, that had somebody not helped me in my worst times of need, I couldn't walk out of my hell. And so I get the opportunity to give that back. <laughs> what a great show today. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so oh, much man. for coming Thank over, you. man, and Thanks visiting me the in the, uh, the garage here in the man cave. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was really fun. do. Good times. You know, and now that you have been here. We have. And done that. Many times. did we ever. You get the t-shirt. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Woo. Nice. Yeah. Oh, these Very are cool. Nice, the Jazz Vortex on NWCZ Radio, baby. Check that yeah. out. These are awesome. <laughs> Wear them with uh, Mick Pride. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Did you go there? Yes. <laughs> hey, speaking of Mick Pride, i got to tell you that what I left today's show with is a very valuable lesson. That is, if I walk into a room and it's filled full of horse poo, I'm not going to worry about the horrible smell. I'm just going to look for the pony. Look for the pony, I'm baby. I'm going to look for the pony. Look for the pony. <laughs> right. It's always there. All right, man. All care, right you guys. See you, Kevin. Take Have care. Have a great day. All, All right, man. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Great episode. Oh, man, that was too much fun. We are goofballs. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on Strangely All Right TV. We have a great crew. We're grateful to be doing this with you guys. And uh, 
It's a real privilege to work with all these folks. Ray, I love working with you. I love working with you and fantastic crew. Yes, fantastic crew. So we'll see you again soon. Everybody, have a great day. Have a great day, Reagan. All right, man. Oh, what a beautiful day. Nom 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 n